of 1.1 million people to do. You said that they're fighting for liberation, they're fighting for freedom against the IDF. You keep talking about the IDF. I've yet to hear you say they should also be fighting for liberation and freedom against Hamas. Uh so, checkmate. Gotcha. I think it's very, very dangerous Hamas to spread this type of propaganda. And to me, it's almost anti-Semitic to go as far Whoa! Wow! <laughs> and there it is. Let's say eviscerates the hill. Footage of that spokesman's response to claims by Human Rights Watch that Israel is using white phosphorus in its airstrikes, putting civilians at risk of serious and long-term injuries. Per the RHW, white phosphorus causes excruciating burns and is used in populated Just areas yeah, is a war crime. Is the IDF using, has no, the no, IDF no. used white phosphorus, Colonel? Categorically, no. Meanwhile, here in the States, the Biden administration has blasted Democratic lawmakers calling for a ceasefire in the Middle East as repugnant. White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre told reporters, quote, our condemnation belongs squarely with terrorists who have brutally murdered, raped, kidnapped hundreds of Israelis. Uh, there can be no equivocation about that. There are not two sides here. There are not two sides. One congressional aide told the Middle East Eye, quote, it's pretty obvious at this point that the White House doesn't care how many Palestinians die, civilians or otherwise. So I think this is a, a time where a lot of people haven't been paying attention to this international conflict. And now a lot of Americans feel that they need to make up their mind about morally where they align. And many people have posted, many celebrities, many prominent members of American. Oh, my God. The, yeah. I, I, I hope anyone who had any remaining hope for celebrities, that hope is gone now. Because holy shit, have they just been abysmal. From Jamie Lee Curtis to fucking Justin Bieber to now Amy Schumer. You're just like, oh, what is happening? Media have said that they stand with Israel following a lot of reports of the brutal attack of, of Hamas uh, in Gaza. And following that, there have been subsequent reports that a lot of the, the really brutal uh, reports of, of babies being beheaded were not founded in, in evidence. And Joe Biden himself said he had seen confirmation, photographic evidence of this, and then subsequently said he had not. Well, this isn't the first time that there's been misinformation in a time of war or conflict. And I think now American people have been made aware very clearly that from the IDF themselves, they are promising to commit war crimes. They are asking for 1.1 million people. Uh, the population of Gaza is near the size of Manhattan to relocate within 24 hours with the routes being blocked, many reports say. Uh, the use of white All phosphorus, truth. also a war crime. And so now I think it's time for the American people to ask themselves if they want US dollars and US weapons to support war crimes being committed. It's time, I think, for a lot of people in the United States to really make up their minds about what they want to be told when the United States is involved in a foreign conflict. Why has this or not been in the news for the duration Canada of the U.S. Too. funding the Israeli military? And also, why is it the case that there seems to be more overwhelming support for Israel in the U.S. media than in Israel itself? Why is there more support in media in the United States than in the allied country we are fighting with? In Israel, people are extremely critical of what their government is doing. You have four in five Israelis saying that they blame Netanyahu's administration for the attack of Hamas on the Israeli people. Oh yeah, has everyone seen this story about how MSNBC like suspended three of their Muslim hosts? Uh, and this was before, by the way, Mehdi Hassan, I, I would say has been incredibly, incredibly measured in how much he has been posting on Twitter specifically uh, about this conflict since it started. He was one of the first people uh, in the media to be incredibly vocal uh, and condemn the actions of Hamas and the horrifying attack on civilians. He was very, very clear on that. Uh, in no way, shape or form was doing any kind of like, you know, celebration or, or shit like that. Um, and uh, the fact that like now MSNBC is being accused of sidelining three of their hosts who happen to be Muslim. Uh, broadcasters out of the anchor's chair since Hamas attacks on Israel last Saturday amid America's wave of sympathy for the Israeli terror victims. 
MSNBC has quietly taken three of its Muslim broadcasters out of the anchor's chair since Hamas's attacks on Israel last Saturday amid America's wave of sympathy for the Israeli terror victims. The network did not air a scheduled Thursday night episode of the Mehdi Hassan show on the streaming platform Peacock. MSNBC also reversed the plan for uh, Ayman Mojadin to fill in that week for the network to host Joy Reid's 7 p.m. show on Thursday and Friday. Uh, an Egyptian-American journalist and veteran with the NBC News correspondent covered the conflict in Gaza for two years. In 2021, he aggressively questioned the Israeli leaders on its strikes on the territory. The two network sources with knowledge of the plans told Semaphore that the networks also plan to have Alicia Menendez fill in for the upcoming weekend when Ali Veshi, the third Muslim-American host, who on Sunday interviewed a spokesman for the Palestinian Authority. Some staff at MSNBC have been concerned by the moves, feeling all three hosts of some of the deepest knowledge of the conflict. NBC says the shifts are coincidental. Coincidental. Yes. Oh, it, it has nothing to do with what's going on. No, 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 no. It's just, these were always in the works. We just wanted to move things around, shake things up. I mean, I think you're just finding weird coincidences. Maybe you're the one who's truly the bigot here, you know? Never think of that. We don't see color. A company officially vehemently pushed back against any notion that either Hassan or uh, Moyadin are being sidelined in any way over the past several days. He's been apprehended on several programs on SNBC as a guest, including shows hosted by Reed and Chris Hayes. Uh, so, you know, those same hosts who were originally supposed to be, uh, you know, in control of their own segments have been sidelined. But don't worry, they're not gone. Uh, they're disappearing as guests on other shows now. So nothing, nothing's happened. In terms of the usage of white phosphorus, which we have not been able to validate uh, those claims. It is not illegal. Uh, Human Rights Watch. What? Did you actually do an apologia for that? Okay, so first off, Human Rights Watch has uh, reported on that as well, if you're looking for, you know, a mainstream uh, source on that story. Uh, but then immediately going from, well, it hasn't been validated, so we don't even know if that's happened. Well, at the same time, that's technically not illegal, just so everyone knows. To use white phosphorus um, in a military conflict, according to the Conventional uh, Weapons Act, that, that is per permissible. So if they were to use it, although Israel has stated that they have not, and in fact, they began to phase out the usage usage of white phosphorus all the way back since uh, 2013. Isn't, so isn't, yeah, isn't it 100 percent illegal to use in civilian areas? Like, wasn't that one of the big reasons why when Russia was doing that, everyone rightfully condemned them for that? I'm going to err on the side of caution here before making a blanket statement in terms of whether or not it was used. But I want to be clear for the audience okay. sake, yeah. it is not illegal in terms of military conflict to use it. They're not breaking any type of uh, military agreements or international laws that govern oh, uh, the way countries conduct this. themselves. With, with that clear, said, I mean, I, I think I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jess. Go ahead. Used against civilians is when it is a war crime. Well, if they're not using it against civilians. Civilians happen to be where they're attacking. <laughs> what is this fucking logic? Look, they weren't the intended targets of the white phosphorus, okay? So if there happens to be, you know, white phosphorus that happens to land on civilians as a result of them trying to attack non-civilians, I mean, you know, it's not supposed to be used in densely populated areas. We're talking one of the most densely populated areas of the world. Half the population that lives in Gaza is children. Uh, Hamas, and Hamas does this strategically. We know this very well. The United States, we've combated Hamas. Um, ISIS and a bunch of other terrorist groups, and often they will find themselves among civilians so that they can paint the image that the U.S. or the... So what about ism? We're already moving directly to the human shields theory, right? Well, this is essentially when they level these buildings and the buildings just crash to the ground and then you see entire blocks are gone. That was because they were filled with Hamas soldiers exclusively. And then it's like, well, that wasn't true because the numbers have come out and it turns out they were filled with families, a lot of families. So, yeah, a lot of people have died. And I'm not just going to keep saying women and children over and over and over again, even though that's kind of just the line. It's the only one that seems to get in through the neocon or liberal skull sometimes. But like... Uh, I, I also uh, uh, am completely horrified and condemn when men are innocently slaughtered who have nothing to do, non-combatants who, who are not soldiers, who are not Hamas fighters, who are, who are just fathers and brothers and uncles who are also killed and crushed in, in, in when, like, everyone who was so outraged at the prospect of babies being beheaded, and rightfully so, because yeah, that sounds horrifying, what do you think happens to baby skulls when fucking buildings fall on them? What, what do you think happens then? But the, 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 the fucking, the, the moral outrage is just like, well, yes, but they're, they're targeting uh, Hamas fighters. 
so it was it was necessary again to to level this block to the ground like did everyone see that report that came out that apparently 48 families entire line as in 48 palestinian families are now wiped out as in all of them that their entire family trees every single last relative 48 that, that there is no more that that is the end of their family story West, or in this case, Israel, is attacking civilians. No, that's not what Israel is doing, and it's not what the United States has done in the past. They just happen to bury themselves with civilians. But it would be a war crime if they used white phosphorus in that case. No, it would not be a war crime because Israel, again, isn't attacking civilians. They're attacking Hamas, which, again, happens to bury themselves in areas where they know are heavily populated with civilians. I mean, this is kind of common. I'm not sure what's complicated about that. What's complicated about it is that there's a lot of military technology that Israel has that would allow them to conduct precision drone strikes. They don't have to use white phosphorus in areas where there are but civilians. But we don't know if they are, though, Jess. To, we we haven't been able to prove if they are, though. You're just making a blanket statement as if it's fact. Yes. They said categorically no. We do know that if they were using white phosphorus, which there are reports that they are, that that would be a war crime, given that reports they're using that it in areas have where not there are been civilians. validated, not by even the United States intelligence agency. So are you now believing Hamas? Because they're the ones who are. So um, Hamas is not the, the ones reporting on that. Uh, it's, again, Human Rights Watch. <sighs> saying that this occurred. If they are using white phosphorus in Israel and civilians are burned by that white white phosphorus, that is a war crime. Yeah, but, but yeah. Questions and answers on Israel's use of white phosphorus in Gaza and Lebanon. Human Rights Watch has determined based on verified video and witness accounts that Israeli forces used white phosphorus in military operations in Lebanon and Gaza on October 10th and 11, 2023, respectively. The videos show multiple airboats of a terribly filled white phosphorus over the Gaza City port and two rural locations along the Israel-Lebanon border. White phosphorus which can be used as a smokescreen or a weapon has the potential to cause civilian harm due to severe burns it causes and its lingering long-term effects on survivors. Its use as densely populated areas in Gaza violates the requirement under international humanitarian law that parties to the conflict take all feasible precautions to avoid civilian injury and the loss of life. It also highlights the need to re-examine the status and uh, adequacy protocol 3 of the Conneva, uh, Convention on Conventional Weapons, currently the only international law dedicating or governing incendiary weapons. Yes, but, but where are you getting this information that they're using it as if we know that to be true? It is alleged. We haven't validated this. They're just spreading propaganda, That's essentially. Right now, on the fact that if they are using white phosphorus, that that would be a war crime. You're saying it would not be a war crime, but if civilians are burned by the white phosphorus, then it is a war crime. Civilians are killed, unfortunately, in combat all the time. Ask anybody who's ever fought in a war. I know a ton of them. That is. And that's bad, right? Like. <laughs> killed bad. Killed horrifyingly, being burned to death. Bad, right? That, that, that doesn't justify when it's happening actively or when your own government's supporting it militarily. That's, that's when you'd be like, yes, the civilians getting killed is bad. I condemn it. And uh, so should you. It's just a part of war. It's an ugly part of war, but it is a part of war. And so to pretend that somehow Israel is doing something that is, un that is unique is a bit of... Who is saying that this is unique? No one's saying that. In fact, I've pointed out already that when Russia used white phosphorus uh, on civilian areas, it was like universally condemned by NATO and the West. And, and then why now? Well, because, you know, war is ugly and, and civilians do get hurt in war and that, that happens. So, I mean, who are you to say that Israel's the first, like, you know, uh, government to do war crimes? Sir, to me. Anytime a country is in conflict with another country or a radical extremist group, there is a likelihood that civilians will be killed. With that said, Hamas also killed civilians. A lot of Israelis have died. Americans have died. So I would hope, Jess, you would have this same angst and ire against Hamas that you appear to be having against Israel. I am on the side of peace. And I think anyone who's on the side of but peace. What does that can mean? That's a, come on, that's a ridiculous blanket and statement. Say, you're on the side of peace. Talk, what does that mean? Tell you. What does There's that not mean? A fight between us, Sir Michael. What I'm saying is right. Yeah, there certainly is. Wow. Uh, I, I, I mean, that I, I, I did not expect this level of confrontation to happen this early to something that I would assume was just kind of universal. Like, uh, 
burning and torturing civilians is bad, right? We can both agree on that. I mean, we can find that, like, there's got to be common ground there, and then we can both universally condemn that and, and ask for it to stop, right? To withhold food and electricity from a population of people is also a war crime. What is happening in Gaza right now is the military of Israel exerting their strength on a population of people who have no military. That is why it is a war crime. That is why today, when we cover this story, we need to ask the Biden administration if yes. they seriously support Gaza war crimes being committed by Israel, who they say is our ally and we stand with Israel no matter what. I think the American people are on the side of peace and war crimes not being committed against innocent civilians. I think civilians. the American and people are on the side of a country now, that has been attacked by a radical Islamic group that, that they didn't call for. And this extremist group. And again, so does that justify collective punishment? Does do, do all the civilians in Gaza uh, need to suffer continuously and immensely for the actions of Hamas? Because because that's the narrative being put forth, right? That's that's the justification for it. We're, we're talking about again uh, a largely civilian population of mostly uh, children. You know, nearly half the population is under the age of nineteen uh, who did not get to vote. A lot of them were not alive when the last potential election took place in Gaza, uh, a lot of whom have absolutely no either involvement or understanding of what is even taking place uh, that were already, again, suffering immensely before this happened. And now that it's like, well, electricity is cut off, food, medical supplies are cut off, the hospitals can no longer run. Luckily, with intense international pressure, water has been restored to southern Gaza, but that doesn't make it po uh, potable. Without fuel, they're going to need fuel like... In addition to that, white phosphorus. Is now finding itself in the midst of civilians to do the very type of propaganda that you're spreading to our audience right now, which is to say it's war crimes against civilians, just instead of saying, well, wait a minute here. Why is Hamas going to heavily populated, dense areas where they know innocent civilians are? Maybe it's because they want Israel to fight them there so that said civilians can be killed in the process. I mean, that's not an irrational assumption uh, to make. What we have going on in Israel and Palestine right now is not a conflict of a few days that began at the beginning of a terrorist attack. We had Netanyahu explicitly decide to prop up Hamas in this war. That is why four in five Jewish Israeli citizens blame the Netanyahu administration for the attack of Hamas. What we have going on here is a much more complicated geopolitical conflict. I think the American people are aware of that. Uh, with that said, I certainly do want peace for the Palestinians. But the Palestinian people, in my opinion, need to stand up against Hamas. It's not the United States' duty to do that. It's not Israel's duty to do that. If you're a Palestinian and you have Hamas in your region using... Benjamin Dixon um, posted this from the Jerusalem Post. An overwhelming majority of Jewish Israelis, 86% of respondents, including 79% of coalition supporters, said the surprise attack from Gaza is a failure of the country's leadership. 56% called on Netanyahu to resign you as an essential a tool, if you will, to, to attack Israel, at what point will the Palestinian people stand up and say, enough is enough. You will not use us anymore as a cudgel in your battle against Israel because we just want peace. Why haven't they done that? Because I certainly think they should. The Palestinian people. I really, really hate that take, and I've seen that take by liberals and conservatives alike about like, well, just imagine if Hamas had been doing positive things, you know, like building. What, what if Hamas spent its time building stuff? You know, why won't why won't Palestinians in Gaza just, you know, uh, take a, a hard stance and, and try to uproot Hamas? And, and like we're talking about individuals, especially civilians living in an open air prison. Again, this was prior to uh, the bombing campaign that is taking place right now. Uh, they had 93% of their water was unpotable. Uh, they had rolling blackouts, about four hours of power. They depended almost entirely on foreign aid for food and assistance and medical supplies. That was the situation prior to this. They were still, prior to this current bombing campaign, part of multiple bombing campaigns in their lifetime that have taken place. Growing up in that, where nearly half the population is, again, children. What on, on in what world are, are we telling people who are being oppressed in open air prisons uh, that like well you know here's what you should be doing here's here's what you should be you should be the ones to to be going after Hamas not not the Israeli government I mean they're basically doing it uh, as a favor you know.
people would like to have freedom from the occupation of the apartheid state of Israel. What about Hamas? What about Hamas? About no, I mentioned Hamas, Israel. Jess. What about Hamas? You keep this blaming us on Israel. If, what about Hamas? If you want to have a conversation, Sir Michael, I think we should, which means that when I speak, you can't speak over me. Well, I think <laughs> you're being irrational, though, Jess. <laughs> you're being irrational. They are unified in support of... I don't know. I, I hear someone having like... Oh, sorry, Jessica, I don't want to pause you there. I, I, I feel like someone is trying to have a, a conversation about this and then sticking to what they're actually talking about on topic and then the other individual is saying but Hamas you know the terrorism terrorism bad right did we both agree terrorism bad occupation of Palestine but the Israeli people are not similarly there are many people in Palestine who don't support the actions of Hamas there are many people who have no idea what to do to get liberation from Israel because they're fighting an army that they don't have an army to fight back with and that army is backed with billions of dollars of weapons from the United States government. So when you have a small terrorist group, Hamas, fighting back, committing atrocities, and that gets reported on, but we don't have decades of an occupation be reported on in the West, that's when we have this kind of lopsided coverage and conflicts when we have the United Nations very clearly calling out where the war crimes are committed. We cannot say that just because Israel is our ally, we will ignore all of the war crimes that they have committed. There are Palestinian people fighting for liberation and fighting for freedom against a military that they don't have the strength to be fighting. It's a lopsided situation and we need to call it as such if we really do care about civilians dying because many more civilians will die because they won't be able to fight the IDF off if they don't allow them to safely exit Gaza within the next 24 hours, which is impossible for a population of 1.1 million people to do. You said that they're fighting for liberation, they're fighting for freedom, against the IDF. You keep talking about the IDF. I've yet to hear you say they should also be fighting for liberation and freedom against Hamas. Uh so, checkmate. Gotcha. I think it's very, very dangerous Hamas to spread this type of propaganda. And to me, it's almost anti-Semitic to go as far Whoa! Wow! <laughs> And there it is. That's why you won't see journalists talking about this. That's why you don't see people talking about this. Why you don't even see a lot of fucking streamers or YouTubers like, you know, actually coming out and taking a stance because as soon as you do, ah, uh, well, hey, you haven't properly condemned Hamas. I think that's anti-Semitism. That, that is anti-Semitism, if ever I've heard it, you know? As far as you're going, and we got to be very careful with that. Uh, if they we want to be really careful fight with that. against Hamas. Fight against the people who are using you as tools against a war because they do not like Jewish people. That's who the Palestinian people should also be fighting if they really want liberation. Didn't know both Casey Explosion and uh, Hassan are doing charity streams right now uh, to fundraise money for a number of very, very important organizations. Casey Explosion has raised a bunch of money for uh, medicine. Uh, no, what is it? M Medical assistance for Palestinians, uh, MAP. Uh, and uh, Hassan is also donating or uh, fundraising money for that organization as well as three others. Uh, I've got a link to his charity stream because Casey uh, has just raised out so if you want to go to exclamation point don't own the link you can go directly to Hassan's charity stream I believe he's already raised over half a million dollars which is wild if you have a dollar to spare go donate it there uh, it'll go to one of four uh, very important charities right now to help with Palestinian relief efforts do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs many are saying this well we've got the solution for you it's the surf times in podcast form Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free, just like the podcast. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This show is produced by amazing people like you, and if you want to help us out, please consider donating over at patreon.com slash the surfs. The show is made possible thanks to Amazing Fletch, Anna Loves Riley, Ariane McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Doug Cady, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine. La Media Panza, Matthew Scarborough, Multimondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Papi, Quiet 185, Rachel K, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby K, Sir Nickus, Spinach Monster, Stellar Vision, Sebastian Demo, Tech Tink, Trevbot EXE, Words Greenwood, and not to mention all of the amazing and fabulous people you now see before you.